Ayo, 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 ayo. Cross Beats Production. What's going on? You're here with Nate28 and this is Cross Beats Production. So I want to show you guys a little technique that I have been using for a little while and um, this technique is related to pink noise again. Um, it's, it's usually back to pink noise because pink noise is a fantastic uh, level that you can kind of reference to when you're mixing. And this, um, this technique that I'm talking about, it's basically using Ozone, um, Ozone 7, which I have the advanced version of. And Ozone 7 has a section in it which is called the matching section. So the matching section basically is a level matching EQ or a smart EQ which basically can reference either the actual reference that you're sending through it, which would be another track or anything like that. It can also reference to pink noise which you can see here and it can reference to the minus uh, the 6 dB guide. So Basically, I like to use the 6 dB guide for a lot of things and also pink noise, but um, if I'm using this technique, basically what I would do is the 6 dB guide is automatically set as the actual reference within this plugin, and then the target audio is what you're sending through it. So obviously the target audio, you hit that play button. Say for example, I've got the drums up, so if I just put this through right now, and then I just capture whatever goes through it. So if you just hit capture, And then you can stop the track and you hit stop on here. So then it just captures what it believes is a reference according to the 6 dB guide, which obviously you can see the line. I'll just zoom out of that for a bit. So this pink noise line is a bit easier to see and you can kind of see that, that red line that goes across there. Basically it's the same thing. So this little gray line that goes across here, it's pretty much a straight kind of line until it gets to about here, which is about 1K, then it dips down quite aggressively all the way to 20K. Um, so basically what I do then is I use that because a lot of the time, especially in a room that I've got, like a room like this or even any room for that matter, especially with the home recording studio guys that you, you kind of get issues with your room and stuff like that. So there's a couple of techniques that you can use to avoid that. Obviously listen at low volumes, which um, if you guys listen to Chris Lord Algae, he talks about that all the time. Uh, just listening at low consistent volumes all the time when you're listening to your track. Try to at least anyway, unless you obviously just cranking it to, to listen to it. Um, but the other thing is um, using things like this, like little tools like this that help you know that if you've got too much low end in your track or this particular track, it did, it had a lot of low end in the kick and things like that that were overwhelming the mix. Um, I wanted to kind of get a, a guide of where I was going with the, with the drum kit and kind of get it to sit right in the mix. So what I did is I used this technique and it gave me a curve that as you can see here, it's kind of opened up some of the top end, which gave me a little bit extra top end in there, and it reduced some of the low end out by using a shelf, removing it all the way down to uh, 20 hertz. So basically anywhere from, it was kind of 500 all the way down on a gradual shelf down to a, the 20 hertz area. And I kind of removed the amount out by 15%. So obviously the more that you crank this, the more that it's more aggressive and it does a, a more of a, I guess, a, a dip on that low end. Um, but I did did notice that I needed some of the low end to come out of the mix to fit in other things into the actual mix. So this is a technique that I've used on a lot of my tracks. The first thing I put into the track to make sure that I was dipping out the, the right amount of low end, um, just as an initial low end dip out, and then further on into the, the actual mixing of it, then I've got other EQs and stuff going on. So I use the SSL, um, the E-channel, which basically is probably a recommended thing if you want to have that console sound inside of your DAW of choice. Um, but basically I use that as the first plugin initiated into all my instances on the on the um, the tracks here. And then I put this ozone on certain tracks that I felt that needed it to remove some of the low end according to the minus 6 dB guide. And then it gave me quite a good mix at the end. So I've obviously mastered this track. I've done the full mixing. The first thing obviously you want to do is get your, your level balance right before you do any of this. But after you've done the level balance and it's time to do EQ, then you start initiating things like this. So if I just play this track to you, you can hear what I've done and hear how good it actually sounds now. In your presence, Holy Spirit, I want to walk in your light. Morning star. But for the main uh, point of this this video is to show you guys that a lot of the time 
people have too much low end in their track and their room doesn't tell them what's going on specifically because they have either the volume too loud or it's just a really bad acoustic environment to be in. So if you're looking at situations like this and you are struggling to find where a good balance is on your mix, obviously you can use pink noise to get your initial static mix, which obviously if you've watched my videos, you would know what a static mix is. Um, but if you don't know what a static mix is, it's just getting that level of all your tracks to be sitting right in the mix before you add any additional EQ or compression. Uh, but for the most part, this is a good technique to use once you've got that established and then to progress in further in your mix. So if you don't have Ozone, I'm sure there's other plugins that can do this type of thing. I know that, um, uh, where is it, Tokyo Dawn, they make a plugin for mastering that can do something similar to this, which hopefully I'm going to do a review on shortly. Um, but I'll just show you guys this plugin because this is what I'm using on my mix just to introduce you to Ozone as the EQ and uh, hopefully you guys got something out of this. It's not too much of an in-depth tutorial but I just wanted to show you kind of the initial uh, EQ that I use on my, my tracks. So I'll catch you guys on the next one and peace.